All right, good evening. Um, sorry, I'm coming very late. I had other engagement, and, um, but I still deem it necessary to do this tonight. Those of us that will not be able to join, you get to see the video tomorrow. Because of other parts, that area that we need to start this week, I need to uh, do this tonight, and then I'll be able to do others in the course of the week, so that it becomes a lot easier for us to conclude this on time. Mubarak, Ma Macro, thank you for joining. I was just talking about the fact that um, I'm sorry I'm coming late. I need to check out some people and then go back home, meetings here and there. Uh, but I'm happy that you guys are not asleep yet. It's 9.30. Adami Jikolade has joined. Thank you very much. We will be talking about part 13 of A to Z of Expo Business Financing tonight. And I'm very glad that you guys are able to connect um so that we can finish a to z of expo business financing on time that's very important for me finishing it on time and the reason for that is so we can move to other other pro, other areas i want us to start other other things in the course of the week i'm hoping that we'll be able to because we'll probably get to part 20 uh in this a to z of expo business financing so I would like us to wrap up as soon as possible because of other things that people are demanding for. So to, tonight I'll be talking about quality control, quality control. In the afternoon I talked about purchase order. And this evening I'm calling quality control. Remember we're discussing everything you need to know and learn in order to be able to either finance or seek for financing. Either finance as a bank or invest your money as an expert investor or seek for financing. Um... <laughs> no, Mubarak, I'm not doing it the INEC way. That's why it's not postponed. You can see that it's not postponed. That I'm still going ahead to do it. So it's not the INEC way, please. So I think I'm doing better than INEC on this. <laughs> INEC postponed for a week. I'm not postponing for a week. I'm going to ensure we do what we need to do. So I'm not postponing for a week. INEC are postponed, but you can see me here now. The only thing is that I delayed before I came up, before coming up, but at least. I'm here. Thank you very much, Mubarak. Olumide Heisin, thank you very much for joining. Good evening. Adami Jikolade, thank you very much for joining. Good evening. I said tonight we'll be discussing quality control. Quality control. If there is one thing that is a challenge to our product in Nigeria, is quality control. It's the bane of our challenges in export business. And the reason is not far-fetched. A number of food we even eat in Nigeria, a number of products sold in Nigeria, are not of quality standard, but we are used to that kind of product. So when people now go into export and the buyer are demanding for high standard, which is normal in that environment, it's like they are demanding for too much. Why? Because the people shipping from here are used to the low standard. For example, plantain chips. If you buy plantain chips, I think I have one of those plantain chips close by to me here. You know, if you buy plantain chips, let me see if I can get one and show you. If you buy plantain chips, you see the way the plantain chips is packaged. You know, if you see the way the plantain chips is packaged, that will not be acceptable. And look at this now. Can you see? See the way a plantain chips is packaged. Can you see? I, 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 assuming I'm in the office, I'll probably be able to show you another kind of packaging for plantain chips. Another kind of packaging for plantain chips. For you to be able to now. This is being sold. I bought it. I mean, it's available. I mean, I need to buy a plant and I bought it. Can you see? Can you see? Now, but if you're in other part of the world, you won't see this kind of stuff. Nobody will even buy it. But in Nigeria, that is what's available, so everybody's buying it. Everybody's buying it. But in another part of the world, nobody will buy it. Why is nobody buying it? Because they've decided to live by a higher standard. So, if this person is selling and nobody is buying he will change. If everybody is demanding for high quality, higher quality, he will change. So because we have accepted this low quality in this environment, someone now think that if he's going to ship abroad and someone is demanding that he has to be well packaged, he said that, is it not just plantain chips? Why should I be, why, why, why should I be worried about packaging? Is it not just plantain chips? And that's exactly one of the challenges we have. Quality control. Quality control. Ralph Abiodo, thank you very much for joining. So quality is a major challenge for us. We, we, we recently, I think over a year now, we had a ban of our, our uh, Ibiscus flour. That's Zobo drink. Ibiscus flour was banned from entering Mexico. 
They are trying to resolve that. I don't know if you have concluded the resolution of that. We had issue also with our beans going into UK, quality issue. We have issue with melon going into UK, quality issue. We had issue with uh, uh, um, granite also, having an issue, quality issue. Quality, 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 quality is a major challenge for a mentor, Nagol. Thank you very much for joining. Good evening. So what we'll be discussing today is about quality and how critical quality is in, so, in, in financing. In, qual in financing. Quality is extremely important. Quality is extremely important. If the quality is not right, then it becomes difficult for you to be able to do a good financing, to be able to get financing, rather, for the product. The bank wants to be sure the quality of the product is right. The buyer wants to be sure that the quality of the product is right. One of the key factors that guarantees success in trade transaction is quality of the item being exported. If the buyer buys the quality, wrong quality once, he can only do it once. He won't be interested again after he has lost it once. If he had issue once, he won't be interested again. Farway in me, follow Jimmy. Thank you very much for joining. Good evening. You know, he will not come to buy from you again if he lost money once. Why? If he has paid for the goods and the quality of the good deliver is bad, he won't do it again. That means the sustainability of the business is threatened. And that tells you how vital and important quality is. If quality of item received are of low grade, then the buyer will hold for that shipment and seek for a refund of any payment already made. If he's not able to get that payment, probably will not be interested in dealing with you. Now, it will not just be you. He will also have issue with dealing with other Nigerians in the, in the, in the future. Why? Because he will say Nigerian. No, they don't know how to get good quality product. Why is he saying that? Because you disappointed him with the quality. You disappointed him with the quality. Fawa Yimi, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we appreciate your comment. Thank you very much for your comment. Now, um, in order to avoid this scenario where you ship goods and the quality is rejected, in order to address the scenario for playing out, most buyers will nominate an inspection agent. Most buyers will nominate an inspection agent um, to confirm quality and quantity of the item before shipment. To confirm quality and quantity of the item before shipment. So what many people have done in international trade is this. There is this industry in international trade called the Q&Q &Q inspection, quality and quantity inspection organization. So you have standard organization, quality standard organization across the world. We have the SGS of this world. We have the Bereverators of this world. We have the Cotecna of this world. We have the um, Cotec. We have the uh, um, Intertech. We have the CCIC. We have the CAIQ. There are a number of global organizations that help with quality inspection. Why? Because... You know, I've talked a lot about documents. The fact that a lot of people depend on documents for them to pay in international trade. So if they are going to pay based on documents, then there must be another way of confirming quality of the product before they receive it. If they are going to pay based on documents, there must be another way of determining the quality of the product before they receive it. Else, they'll be buying bad quality product and they'll be paying in full. So what happens is, a lot of buyers around the world get quality and quality inspection. So in the contract that was signed, it will be stated, the quality inspection agent that will come and check. They will state that SGS will be doing quality and quality inspection and it will be inspecting the following parameters. And the quantity also and quality. That way it becomes a lot, lot easier for the buyer to be sure that the goods he has, is paying for is of good quality even before he sees it. Even before he sees it. And that way, everybody's fine. The business is sustainable. Why? Because the buyer is satisfied with the quality of goods checked by a third party. So what happened is this. If this third party did not do the right job, if the quality eventually is bad upon arrival, there is an SLA, service delivery agreement, signed with the quality inspection agent. The quality inspection agent is therefore held liable. 
The quality inspection engineer is therefore held liable. Why are they being held liable? They're being held liable because of the quality of the goods being bad at destination. What that means is that it's either they are not competent or something went wrong, but they will become liable. That way, the buyer is okay and satisfied and say, okay, fine. This means that I'm protected. The bank will be okay. Why? The bank is protected. So at the end of the day, most likely the buyer will have paid by the time he's discovering the quality is bad and he has someone to hold responsible. And that's one of the ways to ensure quality control is, uh, quality, country, quality risk rather, is mitigated in the trade transaction. Now, um, in order to avoid the scenario where quality of good ship is bad, most buyers nominate an inspection agent, like I said earlier, to confirm the quality and quantity of the item before shipment at the port of loading. The document containing the outcome of this inspection then forms the basis, then form the basis for payment on the shipment, especially under a letter of credit transaction. So the buyer can say, for me to pay for this good before I see it, you need to present a document issued by the third party inspection agent we both agree and nominated, which shows that the quality of the item ship is in line with what we discuss. And on the basis of that, on the strength of that, the buyer's bank, under a letter of credit transaction, we go ahead and effect payment. On the basis of that, on the strength of that, the buyer's bank will go ahead and effect payment. Sunday Ali, thank you very much for joining. Good evening. An exporter should therefore ensure that export contracts highlight the quality specification and all other details related to the quality inspection before he signs the contract. An exporter should therefore ensure that the contract highlights the quality specification and other details related to the quality inspection before he signs the contract. If the buyer is going to nominate a quality inspection agent, then there must be specifications in the contract that will be used to measure the quality. And you know what I discovered? A number of newbies in export business don't understand this quality specification thing. You know, someone was calling me recently. He wanted to export cashew nut commodity. And I said, okay, fine. Send me the quality specification of the item. And he actually sent me a quality specification. But the quality specification is sent to me was not for raw cashew nut, it's for raw cashew kernel. And I know, from what he said, what he has is raw cashew nut. Now, that person is going to sign an agreement with a buyer. And he doesn't know the quality specification of the item. And he was begging as if I didn't want to deal with him, I didn't want to help him look for buyer. And I said, what you said is wrong. What you said is wrong. You can't send this and expect that someone will deal. Because you told me it's raw cashew nut, but the specification you are sending to me is cashew kernel. By the way, for those listening to us, raw cashew nut is cashew nut with shell. Cashew kernel is cashew nut that you have removed the shell. When the cashew nut have a shell, the quality specification is different from when the shell has been removed. And that's what happened in this case. I just used that example to let you understand the fact that quality specification is extremely critical and you're not supposed to go ahead and sign a contract that does not give detail of quality specification or when it gives the detail of quality specification, you will not be able to meet that quality. On the other hand, bankers or investors who want to invest in a network business to ensure that the quality inspection report from the designated inspection agent in the export contract is in line with the expectation of the buyer. Not just in line with the expectation of the buyer, and uh, uh, as also stated in the export contract, before shipment is made, either to the local supplier, in case of pre-export financing, or the exporter, in the case of post-export financing. I'll go over that again. 
Now, an effort should ensure that the contract highlight the quality specification and all other details related to the quality inspection before he signed the contract. Chidima Okpala, thank you very much for joining. An expert should ensure that the quality specification is clearly stated before he signed the contract. Now, on the other hand, the financier or banker should ensure that the quality inspection report from the designation inspection agent in the contract is in line with the contract. Walter, former, thank you very much for joining. Let me explain what I mean. So if a financier is going to finance, he also wants to ensure that the inspection report is in line with the quality inspection. The inspection report is in line with the quality in, I'm sorry, the inspection report is in line with the quality specification stated on the contract. The inspection report is in line with the quality of the contract. That way, you know the buyer already spends quality of the contract. So uh, you are financing an export transaction as a banker. You are checking this guy has shipped before. What did he ship? Item, any item. I don't want to be using commodities. Yeah, I, I in as much as we do a lot of commodity export, I like to do finished product. You know, Nigeria produce a. Uh, Tiles, floor tiles. So let me use tiles. <laughs> so the tiles are supposed to be ceramic tiles. Um, let's say it's a 20 by 20 um, cm dimension. Thickness, 5 um, mm. Sorry, thickness, 50 mm. Size, dimension, 10, 20, uh, 50 by 50 mm. Uh, sorry, 20 by 20 cm. Then, 50 uh, mm for thickness. Color, brown. Type, ceramic. This is the quality specification. When the inspection agent comes to check, it must state the same thing. It must state the same thing. That quality specification has stated on the contract must be the same with the inspection agent report if that transaction is going to fly. You know, quality sometimes is not that the product is entirely bad. It's just that it falls short of what the buyer wants. For solid mineral, for example, I thought I might have to go back to call to community every now and then. A buyer wants to buy lead of 50%. The supplier delivers lead of 30%. The buyer might still be able to buy that 30%. Only that now, since the quality specification is lower, he will buy at a lower price. So when you talk about quality specification, sometimes does not necessarily mean that the quality the product is entirely bad. All right. Now, it is also very important to note that report of inspection at the port of loading could be defective sometimes, especially for commodities that are not homogeneous in nature. So let me talk a little bit about commodity, even though I don't like talking about commodity because I'm trying to encourage people to do finished product. If you are doing commodity export, we are in the commodity season, people are doing cashew nut, they are doing sesame seed, they are doing ginger, they are doing different commodity. If you are doing commodities, remember, if it's agro commodity, it's still better because it's a bit homogeneous. If they do a very good systematic sampling or good random sampling, the quality should be reasonably okay. But if you are doing solid minerals and you are doing sampling and the solid minerals has not been crushed, this is a mistake I've made in the past, the solid minerals have not been crushed and you are doing sampling of these solid minerals, the result that even in the inspection area is the best in the world. That's why in Nigeria, some say again will not they will come and inspect your product if it's no solid mineral, if it's not crushed. It's crushed to a uniform size, maybe to a quartz size, to a gravel size, or to sand-like size, fine sand, whichever way, a uniform size. When it's uniform, when it's homogeneous in, in nature, when you sample, the chance of getting the same result in Nigeria and in China is very, very high. When it is not homogeneous in nature, 
I've done quality reports in Nigeria before. Zinc oil was, I think, I think 45% or thereabout. When you go to China, it was around 34, 35%. Almost 10% difference. Why? The zinc oil was not crushed. You know, minerals are solid minerals, they are, they are rock like. They are rock like. Because they are rock like, if you do not crush it, make it homogeneous before you draw sample for analysis, most likely, if you do analysis in Nigeria and it gets to China, and, they, and you know what happened in China is this. Typically in China, they will crush it. Typically, they will crush it. Because they will crush it, what that means is that their result will be different from yours. Because now, they will, when they crush and mix together, you are now going to have a mixture of those not so good quality together mixed with the good quality and you have an average quality. Whereas when you are sampling, probably you most of the time sample the right quality. Only. But now there's a blend. Then there's a challenge with quality at destination. So that's why I say very important that the report of inspection, uh, it's very important to note that Report of inspection at the port of loading could be different from report of discharge if the item are not homogeneous in nature. This could be attributed to the type of sampling used and the percentage of the goods that were sampled. This has led to the practice of a second leg of quality inspection at destination. For every commodity shipped, both agro and solid minerals, there is always a second leg of inspection by a third party at destination. If it's finished product, there will be inspection, but not third party. This buyer himself can inspect. These are led to the price of a second leg of quality inspection at destination port. The implication of this is that if the buyer is effecting payment before arrival of goods at the destination, at the destination, he will often have, he will often pay an amount less than the total value of the goods because he has paid thinking the quality is good now he's finding out the quality is not good enough so he will have overpaid how many buyers don't want to do that the balance is then paid upon confirmation of product quality and quantity after arrival at the destination so buyer effective payment before arrival of good at destination will often pay less than the total value of the goods why so you are shipping goods to me the good is worth five million naira, or let's say ten thousand dollars. The buyer will say, "I will pay three six three thousand dollars." When I see the goods and I confirm quality, I pay the balance two thousand dollars. Why is he doing that? Because of the fact that it's commodity, and for a commodity, the chance of quality issue is high, especially if it's coming from developing country like Nigeria, is high, very 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 high. So what they do is to discount payment. If at the end of the day when the quality arrives and the good is good enough, then they pay the balance. Sometimes they don't want to pay the balance. I've had a case where the buyer is saying I should do another shipment before he will pay the balance. Of course, we didn't do any shipment to him again. Because if you are saying someone has done shipment to you and it's of good quality, and then you are saying before you will pay him his balance, he must do another shipment. Using that to key him down. A Chinese buyer. That could happen. Which is why we recommend overseas representative, a buyer rep, a rep of the seller at the destination. A rep of the seller at the destination. It's also very important that the exporter obtain a service level agreement from the inspection agent. This is to ensure that he has a recourse to them if the goods that they certify to be good for shipment are found to be defective. If the good, the, the, if the good uh, that were, that were sh shipped eventually were found to be defective after quality analysis has been done, there is need for to go after the inspection agent. That's why there is always a service level agreement with the inspection agent. So if he has inspected the goods, the goods are supposed to be of high standard, but the quality standard is low, of course. He won't go scot-free. The buyer will then go after the inspection agent. Buyer Fanny, Fanny Nade, thank you very much for joining. Uh, Ode Agbala.
Vitalis. Sorry if I didn't pronounce very well. Thank you very much for joining. Good evening. Now, what we've discussed tonight, basically, as I round off, is basically talking about A to Z of Export Business Financing, Part 13. So if you are joining us for the first time tonight, you have missed Part 1 to 12. We come up twice every day. On weekday, it's usually 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. every day. 8 a.m., 6 p.m. every day. And basically what we discuss is on trade. And this is import-export platform. Import-export platform. And the objective of the platform is to promote international trade. The objective of the platform is to promote international trade. Peter Amifi, thank you very much for joining. Good evening. So the objective is to promote international trade. Olu Femelutayo, good evening. So if you've missed the previous edition, please, all you need to do is to go to my timeline and you'll find the previous videos there. Or you check my name. You can search for my channel with my name on YouTube. And then, of course, you'll find the previous video there. Basically, what we have done so far is to discuss almost all the issues you can imagine that will happen in a trade transaction, especially export business, as far as raising financing for export business is concerned. My name remains Dele Ayemibo, and this is Import Export Platform Facebook Live from Trade Academy. See you tomorrow morning by 8 a.m. Good night, and bye for now.